This is the city, Los Angeles, California. The outdoors play a big part in our lives. It's boating weather almost 12 months a year, and people have really taken to the sport. The ocean provides the playground. In 1962, the city began building the Marina del Rey. It already has berths for 6,000 boats. There are five yacht clubs, seven restaurants, two motels, and a hotel. If you want to live by your boat, there are numerous apartment complexes on the water with convenient shopping. There are also facilities for the day sailor. On weekends, you can see hundreds of power and sailboats of all sizes moving through the man-made inlet. It's a good, healthy way to enjoy life. Some people like living dangerously. When they hurt others, I go to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. July 15th. It was fair in Los Angeles. We were working out of Community Relations Division as recruiting officers. The boss is Captain Larry Walton. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. It was 8.30 p.m. We were attending a meeting of the East Los Angeles Graduates Union. Its purpose? To help high school graduates find the right career. Our purpose? To try and interest them in law enforcement. Let's go with East L.A. graduates. Well, they're interested, but the idea of a police career meets a lot of resistance. Especially among the ethnic groups. It's understandable to some we're asking them to join the establishment, the other side. Well, intellectually, most of them know it's really their side as well. Instinctively, that's another matter. A lot of them worry, too, about what their friends would say if they joined. I don't need to tell you how badly the department wants and needs recruits, particularly from the ethnic groups. No, sir. We want more Mexican-Americans, more Orientals, and more Negroes. Well, we're going to talk to them again. Talk may not be enough. Find a way to reach them. Well, I think we have. Officer Dave Evans, he's working patrol. They know him and they like him. He's sort of a hero to them. All-star athlete in the city school system. Played for the Pittsburgh Steelers for a while. I'd like to ask him to come with us next time. Good idea. Go ahead. Yes, sir. But if that doesn't work, find something that will. Those fellows are more important than they know. How's that? If they join, others will follow. p.m. Bill and I had spent the afternoon talking to some servicemen who were due for discharge about joining the department. We drove back to the police building. We wanted to talk to Officer Dave Evans as he came off day watch. We met him in the locker room in the basement of the police building. Sarge? Bill? Dave? How's it going? Routine, you know. Family dispute, traffic offense, couple of hot rollers. We heard you had a 211 yesterday. Liquor store. Parked the car in the alley. Panicked when the delivery truck blocked their exit. Tried to make it on foot. That's when we got there. They ran right into us. Forgot to mention they were armed. Yeah, but they didn't use them. We heard you knew one of them. Grew up in the same neighborhood. Never thought I'd have to bust him. Shame he didn't do what you did years ago. What's that? Join the department. He wasn't interested. He might have been if somebody had talked to him. You're both recruiting detail, aren't you? You're after something. Well, you've heard of the East L.A. Graduates Union. Yeah, they meet in the high school out there, don't they? It's a vocational guidance kind of thing. They bring in people to talk about job opportunities to kids who have already graduated. That's right. We've been meeting with them. 
I heard that. I know some of those kids. Uh-huh. That's why we'd like you to give us a hand by speaking to them. Me? Oh, come on, Sarge. I'm no public speaker. You won't have to make a speech. Joe does that. You'll just answer questions, level with them, tell it like it is. Some of them have just been bumming around since they left school, you know, working at odd jobs, getting nowhere. We tried talking to them, but we can't seem to reach them. They listen to you, Dave. Look, fellas, I'm a patrolman. I'd like to help, but, you know... Could make a big difference. We'd appreciate it if you would. I don't know. More important, they might appreciate it in the long run. How's that? Everyone you help straighten out now, you might not have to handcuff later on. Monday, July 22nd, 8.40 p.m. We attended the weekly meeting of the East L.A. Graduates Union. As arranged, Bill and I were there to tell them more about a police career. The word had gotten around that this time Officer Dave Evans would be there with us. A would-be recruit has to pass five exams to join the department. Written exam, oral, medical, a personality evaluation test, and an agility test. Now, if he passes all five, he then enters the police academy, where he alternates periods of actual field work with sessions dealing with such things as patrol tactics, law, self-defense, the use of firearms, and so on. Then, after he's been a policeman for one year, he can specialize if he wants to. Now, there are more than 250 job opportunities in the department, and if you qualify, you can apply for any one of them. Forgery, homicide, motorcycle patrol, narcotics, scientific investigation, and a great many others. Now, one more thing. Why you should join. I won't talk about the contribution you'd make to society as a policeman. I won't mention the satisfaction you'd receive helping your fellow men, of being a vital, important, active member of your community. Maybe those things are important to you, maybe they're not. That's for you to decide. But if you are interested in a job with a future that's exciting and far from routine, a career that offers unlimited opportunities as well as guaranteed security, I sincerely suggest you consider joining the department. Now, since you men probably have a lot of questions, I'm going to ask Officer Dave Evans here to answer them for you. Dave? This is something new for me. Most of the time, I ask the questions, like where's your driver's license? Or what are you doing with those cigarette papers? All right, who's got the first question? Me, man. I got a real good one for you. How much bread do you Irvines make? What kind of money? Well, as soon as a recruit enters the police academy, he starts at 715 a month and gets an automatic raise for the next three years and then is eligible to take the promotional exam. Hey, man. Some of those big factories pay more than that to start, don't they? That's right. Sometimes they do. And that's one of the reasons we have trouble getting recruits. But if all you're interested in is money, we don't want you anyway. We're offering you a career, not just a job. What about those amendments that were just passed by the people? You know, Proposition A? I thought some of that money they voted at the police department meant higher wages. Not the money from Proposition A. That goes for better facilities, better equipment, better working conditions. But under the other propositions the public passed at the same time, yes, it's true, we get paid for overtime. Hey, man, just like they do in those factories. Will you tell us again some of the qualifications we need to join? Well, you've got to be a high school graduate, and you've got to pass the department's exams. I got a question. Are the exams tough? They aren't easy, but all of you here ought to be able to pass them. And if you were in the upper quarter of your class in school, you won't have any trouble at all. I got a real serious question for you this time. All right. If I join the fuzz, does that mean I dodge the draft? No, it does not. You got to serve your time like anybody else. You don't get any special privileges being a policeman. Man, you ain't got nothing going for you at all, have you? I've got a question. Would you tell us why you became a policeman? Why? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, I always liked the idea, even as a kid. Later on, when I started thinking about what I was going to do with my life, well, this might sound a little phony, but I wanted to do something for my country. I remember when we studied civics in school, they told us the police department was a local arm of the government, and that's just what it is. The laws may be made in the state capitol, or decisions handed down by the Supreme Court, but it's a police officer who sees to it that those laws have real meaning, some real use. I figured that was just about as important a job as a man could have. And there was another reason I became a policeman, too. I wanted to do something for my own people. And I figured if I was a part of the law, I could do that as well. And I'll tell you something else. Some of our people talk about white man's law. There's no such thing. Not when black men like you and me wear this uniform. It's everybody's law. What about all those jobs Sergeant Friday mentioned? Which one would be best for a Negro? Any one of them. If you've got the qualifications, you can apply for whichever one you want. There's no segregation or favoritism in the department. Does that mean I'd have as much chance of getting promoted as a white man? That's just what it means. 
Promotions are based on results of exams, and your chances of getting good grades are as good as anybody's. Hey, I got a question for you, officer. If all that equal opportunity jazz is true, how come you're only a patrolman and he's a sergeant? If you were as smart as you act, you would know it's because he's been a policeman a lot longer than I have. You expect us to believe that, do you? I do, yes, because it's true. That's what you say, Uncle Tom. That's exactly what I say, and that's what I expect you to believe. And I'll tell you why. Because even now, when we have only around 250 Negroes in the department, 24 are sergeants and five are lieutenants, and if you don't think that's enough, you can drag off that chair and do something about it right now. Yeah, and what is that? Join the department. July 23rd, 8.30 a.m. I checked in with Lieutenant Ed Henry and reported the progress of the previous evening's meeting. Then he was able to reach them? He was. Good. There were a few rough moments, but he handled them just right. What happened? Hecklers? That's right. One in particular. He did everything he could to throw Evans. His name's Alec Harper. What about the others? They knew he was leveling with them. They like him, and they trust him. Then they'll follow his lead? Good chance. What's your next move? Well, I thought I'd give them the rest of the week to digest what they've learned. All right, but don't let them lose interest. You don't have to worry about that. We'll hear from him. That's fine. I'm afraid we'll hear from Alec Harper, too. Friday, July 26th, 8.30 a.m. Bell and I checked in for work. We were scheduled to discuss our recruiting program with the Junior Chamber of Commerce that morning, so I cleaned up some paperwork before we left. Joe, when were you born? April 2nd, why? Astrology. Astrology? You know, the zodiac, horoscopes, mystic powers of celestial bodies. Boy, there's some real good stuff in here. Oh, sure there must be. Ah, April 2nd, Aries, sign of the old ram. Mars favors Uranus. Jupiter moves in on Leo. Boy, look at that. Joe, you know what? No, what? This is your lucky day. Listen to this. Wise investments will pay large dividends. Think of that. Decisions made today will invariably prove wise. Think of that. Influence at its zenith. You realize what that means, Joe? What what means? Influence at its zenith. Come on, come on, we got work to do. See, you influenced me already. Three days had passed since our second meeting with the East LA Graduates Union. It was time for a follow-up. We decided to check back with one of the young men who was at the last meeting. He worked at a neighborhood car wash. Hi, Sarge. What's the matter? Doesn't the LAPD polish his own cars? You do a nice job. I'll have to bring my own car in here. Better make it soon. This is just a fill-in job. I'm looking for something better. Well, the other night, you seemed interested in joining the department. Yeah, some of us were interested for a while. Well, what do you mean, for a while? Well, we thought about it a lot. We figured if it was OK for Dave Evans, it was OK for us. Yeah. We figured he'd level with us. No, come on. Straight stuff, you know. That's right. So we were all set to take your exams. That was before. Before what? Before we found out Dave was just trying to sell us a bill of goods. How's that? Oh, come on, you know. Tell us. Come on, the word's out. What word? Dave Evans. He turned in his resignation. p.m. We checked with the watch commander. He told us Dave Evans was on night watch. That meant he was off duty now. We drove over to his home to see him. He's just getting ready for work. I'm sorry it's so dark in here, but it seems silly to have the lights on in the daytime. Yeah, we understand. Those boys must have thrown a thousand rocks at the windows. The insurance company was supposed to send somebody over to repair them. He still hasn't come. Could you identify any of the boys? Not really. That's what the sergeant who investigated asked me. They look like some who live in the neighborhood, but I couldn't be sure. I stayed away from the windows. There was glass everywhere. Do you know why they did it? Oh, we know all right. We knew the last time, too. What's that? Dave's a policeman. Hello, Sarge. Bill. Excuse me, I've got to pack Dave's lunch. Dave, are you quitting the job? That's right. 
The kids who did that were black like me. Is that why you're resigning? One of the reasons. You could move to a different neighborhood. We've been living here to save so we could do just that. But even buying our own home isn't the answer. Maybe they wouldn't throw stones on another neighborhood, but there'd still be somebody on the block who would think of me as a traitor to my own kind. Well, you should be used to people like that by now. There's some things you never get used to. The first hundred times somebody threatened to get even with me, I worried. After that, I took it for granted. All right, that's you, not me. It's all of us. Joe, Bill, look. I know why you're here and I appreciate it, but no sale. You said the broken windows were just part of the reason. What's the rest? All right, I'll tell you. I'm tired of all the insults I have to take. Oh, not the ordinary kind that every man in the department gets. That's something I can handle like you two do. I mean the other kind you don't get. The Uncle Tom, the Whitey's boy remarks? That's it. But still only part. How do you mean? I get it from the whites as well. More than we do. Maybe. Maybe not. But don't you see I get it from both sides. Dave, no one ever told you it was easy. I don't expect it to be easy. But a man should be able to feel his work means something. Yours does. No. A policeman should be able to feel he's an asset to his community, black or white. But as it is, neither has as much respect for me as they would if I were white. Oh, come on, Dave. Give me an example. Just one. When I've really been an asset, the whites resent me for being a policeman. My own people treat me like a traitor. What about last week when you and Mackenzie stopped two motorists from fighting after a traffic accident? What about it? The Negro motorist wouldn't even listen to Mackenzie, but he talked to you. Sure. He figured I'd side with him, and he cursed me when I wouldn't. Did you hear that, too? And what about the other day, that family dispute? The Negro husband and wife? As soon as she saw me, she wouldn't even speak to me. Only to Mackenzie. She figured I'd side with her husband. Well, it's human nature. Right. That's what's eating at me. Dave, there were a dozen Negroes at that graduates' union meeting last Monday. Only one of them gave you a rough time. The rest were ready to follow your advice. They're not now. I'm sorry about that, but it can't be helped. Well, I guess we can't change your mind. Sure you can. It's easy. How's that? Give me one example, just one. That's all I want. What's that? Tell me when I was really appreciated either by your people or by my own. p.m. I checked in with the lieutenant to report our progress and to make a suggestion about Dave Evans. How does it stand, Joe? A lot of those boys were going to follow Dave's lead. Now I'm afraid we've lost him. Looks like we've lost him, too. Yes, sir, that's right. Anyone making the fellows change their minds again? Not without making Dave change his. Then that's what we've got to do. Bill and I talked to him for almost an hour. I know, but we need those recruits. Not only that, we need Evans. He completes his fourth year in the department next month. And that means he could take the sergeant's exams. That's right. He'd make a good sergeant, wouldn't he? He couldn't have forgotten. He hasn't. I saw him when he came in for night watch. He says he's not interested. He's depressed, discouraged. We all get fed up once in a while, but he's overreacting. It's been building up for some time now. Those broken windows just triggered it. I figure it's something he's got to work out for himself, and he needs time for that. A leave of absence might help. Uh, it's no good, Joe. Well, the captain would go for it. He would, but Evans won't. I already suggested it to him. He'll have to think of something else, and soon. Yes, sir. Before those fellows lose interest. Joe, it says in here the stars exert an influence over our lives that science has completely ignored for centuries. Does it say why it's ignored it for so long? Oh, I haven't gotten to that yet. Have a candy bar. No, thanks. Go ahead. You look hungry. I'm not. Yes, you are. Well, Joe, I've got to pull the lever. Well, sir, what do you think of astrology now? Your horoscope was right all the way, wasn't it? Was it? Well, sure. It said wise investments will pay large dividends. were scheduled to talk about recruiting to a citizen civic committee that evening. Since the meeting wasn't until 9, we decided to have an early dinner. We headed for a restaurant a block away from the meeting place. Any unit in the vicinity of the 800 block Grand Avenue, citizen reports an officer in need of assistance. We're two blocks away. All right, lean on it. Break it up! Break it up! Oh, that's enough of that! Dave Evans. Wait, I'm just holding! I think we ought to give him a hand. 
We're right here if he needs us. Now, both of you, just cool it. Officer, my name's Rogers. I own this store. I tried to stop them. They wouldn't listen to me. Yes, sir. Cover the front door, would you please, sir? And keep everybody out. What are you doing? Now, all of you in here, just keep it down. Keep it quiet. You men, you, you can't stay here. You've got to go back outside. We're police officers, sir. Oh, good. I'm good. the one who phoned for more help. Yeah. One policeman isn't enough. You've got to help him. Those kids could smash my showcases, break my merchandise. They could start a riot. And I've got the store next door. I had my last place looted. You can't let that happen to this one. What are you standing here for? You ought to be over there helping that other officer. And you ought to call more men. A dozen at least. This place is a powder keg. A dozen men could light the fuse. Even three of us might. There are times when one man's enough. Especially when it's the right man. Hey, lay off, fuzz. Yeah, butt out. This is none of your business. I'm making it my business. And you people were told to quiet down. Now get quiet. Whitey had it coming to him. What did I tell you? Oh, okay, man, okay. Now, what started the fight? He started it, man. I was minding my business when he started acting like I was dirt. Just dirt. I didn't do a thing to him. He told me to get out of his way. Well, this is a public place. I got as much right, and that's what I told him, and that's when he started slugging me. Alec Harper, that's a lie, an out-and-out -out lie. You started it like you always do, and I'm sick and tired of it, sick and tired. Do you hear? Miss, if you saw what happened, suppose you tell me. Oh, you bet I will. I needed some flowers for my sister's birthday, so I came in here to buy some with him. And then I saw him. We're in some of the same classes in school. His girlfriend is one of my best girlfriends, so I said hi, just hi. And right away, he got so crazy mad, he jumped on him. You shut up! You shut up now! Alec Harper, I'm through with you! I'm through for good this time! <laughs> Seems to me what we've got here is a fellow who doesn't know how to get along with the girls. What's the matter, Alec? Didn't your father ever tell you you have to use honey to hang on to one? My dad taught me something I've always remembered. You don't yell at a woman until you get married. Then you gotta yell to make yourself heard. What do you think I should do with these two? Let them go? You do that. And he's got a lot of fast talking to do in a hurry. All right, son, you can go. All right, you can go, too, but take this with you. Next time, you won't only lose your girl. You'll have me to worry about, too. You understand that, son? Yes, sir, I do. Good. Now go on, get after her, and good luck. All right, everybody, there's nothing more to see. Everybody move along unless you have business in the store. Joe, Bill, what are you doing here? Watching a pretty good policeman at work. That's right. Officer, I want your badge number. What's your badge number? It's right here, 4868. I gotta thank you. Really thank you. A year ago, my store was smashed by a fight like that. Only then, there wasn't a policeman like you around. I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you just did. I really appreciate it. The way you stopped that fight, the way you handled that crowd, I'm gonna write your captain. I'm gonna tell him how thankful we are. No, sir, that's really not necessary. <laughs> it's necessary to us. Now, that badge number was 4868, wasn't it? Yes, that's what it was. Dave. Remember those examples you wanted a couple hours ago? Yeah. Well, you've got a couple of good ones right here, haven't you? I guess I have. Say, we've got to have your captain's name. We're going to address this letter to him personally. And everybody in the neighborhood is going to sign it. That's really not necessary. Oh, yes, it is. It is to us. Now, come right along. Pretty smart, aren't you? How's that? Letting Dave handle that fight alone, a wise decision, Joe. If you say so. You'll have to admit now there's a lot more to astrology than you thought. What do you mean? Well, your horoscope, remember what it said? Huh? Decisions made today will invariably prove wise. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. During the remainder of that summer, several members of the East L.A. Graduates Union took the police department's applicants' examinations. In a moment, the results of those examinations. Ninety percent of the applicants passed the examinations and went on to the police academy. They are now serving as officers of the Los Angeles Police Department.